The following is from the Agency for Instructional Technology, AIT. Let's go imagining together to a place so old it's always new. We'll tell a tale, my friends, to you, and share a smile before we're through. And share a smile before we're through. When you do something nice for somebody, like a person or a pet, you're telling them that you like them or that you love them. Now, acts of kindness like that are always repaid. I mean, it might take a while. It might be sort of different when it comes back to you, but it's always repaid. Look at that little doggy there, a cute pooch. I mean, I'd like to do something nice for him, wouldn't you? Well, he's in today's story. It's called The Charmed Ring. Once a merchant gave his son 300 gold pieces and told him to go out into the world and make a life for himself. Thank you, father, said the young man. I shall repay you and someday make you proud that I am your son. With that, he left his father and set off down the long, long road. He had not gone far when he came upon some men who were quarreling over a dog. One of the men wanted to kill the dog. Wait, please, interrupted the young man. I will give you 100 gold pieces for the dog. He could not let them kill the poor dog. The older men were astonished. One hundred gold pieces? That was far more than the dog was worth, and they gladly accepted the offer. So off he went with the dog, who was quite relieved. Thank you, master, for saving my life. I shall repay you, and someday make you proud to have me for your servant. Soon the young man and dog came upon some women who were arguing over a cat. One woman claimed that the cat had never caught a rat. I'll see that lazy good-for-nothing dead this day. Wait, please. I will give you 100 gold pieces for the cat. He could not let them kill the poor cat. 100 gold pieces for a cat? You must be crazy. Here, take the beast. We'll thank you for the gold. So now the young man had a cat and a dog and 100 gold pieces remaining. The much relieved cat said to the young man, Thank you for saving my life. I will repay you and someday make you proud to have me as your servant. The young man, the dog, and the cat traveled down the road until they came upon some men who were tormenting a small snake. One was saying, Snakes are the curse of the earth. All should be killed at sight. Wait, please. Do not kill the snake. I will give you 100 gold pieces for it. 100 gold pieces for our worthless slimy snake? Yes, 100 gold pieces. It's yours. The men laughed to think that anyone would give anything for the life of a snake. Thank you, said the snake as it coiled around the young man's neck. With no gold pieces left, the young man could only turn around and go home to his father. You fool, you idiot. You have squandered the money I gave you on useless animals. Since you like animals so much, go sleep in the barn. I don't want you in my house. That night, the young man slept in the barn, the dog by his right hand, the cat by his left, and the snake lying across his chest. In the dark, the snake whispered to the young man, I must know your name. My name is Sindhu. Very well, Sindhu. I will tell you this. I am no ordinary snake. I am a snake prince. Tonight, as you sleep, I shall shed my skin. When you awake in the morning, I shall be gone, but my old skin will be here on your chest. When you touch it, it will become a gold ring, a charmed ring, which will grant your every wish. Be careful, Sindhu, to keep it with you always. Never let it fall into the hands of evil ones, for it will grant evil wishes as well as good ones. Keep the dog and the cat with you always. You will need them someday. I understand, Sindhu promised to be careful. 
Then they both fell asleep. When Sindhu awoke in the morning, there was a delicate papery skin where the snake had been. As he touched it, there was a bright flash, and suddenly there appeared a golden ring where the skin had been, just as the snake had promised. Sindhu woke the dog and the cat. Our fortune is too good to be true. He showed them the ring and told them the snake story. Off they set to find the perfect place for Sindhu's first wish. After some time, they came to a green knoll beside which ran a singing brook. This is the perfect spot, said Sindhu. I wish to have my mansion beside this brook. No sooner had he spoken and touched the ring than there appeared a stately mansion with majestic trees and lovely flowers all around it. Sindhu, the dog and the cat, rushed inside. It was fine enough for a king, so elegant were the furnishings. Now for my second wish, said Sindhu. I wish there to be a beautiful maiden to share my palace. As he touched the ring, a beautiful lady appeared before his eyes, looking exactly as he had imagined she should be. Her name was Sarika. She looked at Sindhu and smiled. He knew that she was just as gentle and kind as he, and on her finger he placed the ring. With this ring I brought you forth. My fondest dreams have been fulfilled, and now I want you to have this charmed ring so that anything you may desire will be yours. So for many long days, Sindhu and Sarika lived together in complete happiness. The dog and the cat were as contented as two animals could ever be. Each morning, Sarika would comb her hair by the window as she dressed for the day ahead. One morning, two of her beautiful, silky blonde hairs drifted from the comb out of the window and fell into the singing brook where a floating leaf carried them away. Now, a mile or two downstream on the same brook, there lived a witch, and that witch just happened to be seated beside the brook as the leaf with the golden hair floated past. The witch reached out and plucked the hair from the brook. Ah ha! This golden hair comes from a truly fine lady. Just the kind of fine lady I have in mind for a wife for my son. The witch's son was an ogre with a face as ugly as his nasty temper. The witch thought to herself, I know where this golden hair came from, and I know how to find the maiden. With that, she changed herself into a bird and flew off following the singing brook. Before long, she came to Sindhu and Sarika's mansion. She flew up to Sarika's window and alighted on the sill. Good morning, beautiful lady, the witch said in her little bird voice. Good morning, friend, said Sarika. What brings a bird to my chambers? Oh, I fear I am lost. My poor family is waiting for me. I must get home soon. Is there any way you can help me? Sarika thought of the ring. It was lying on her dressing table. Yes, I can send you home with my charmed ring. It can do anything. As she reached for the ring, the bird rushed past her hand, grabbed the ring in its beak, and flew away. Moments later, the witch was standing once again beside the brook with a ring in her teeth. She took it in her hand and rubbed it, saying, I will have mansion and maiden for my son, mansion and maiden for my son. At that instant, the mansion and Sarika appeared, and this time an iron fence surrounded everything. Poor Sarika was now a prisoner of the witch. Forgive me, Sindhu, for I did a foolish thing. I didn't know the bird was a witch. I only wanted to help. And now I have lost the ring, and you have lost everything. Which Sindhu, at that very moment, had discovered. One moment, he and his friends had been walking through the hall of his mansion, and then, there they were, standing on the empty knoll. What has happened? Oh, where is my house? My wife? Huh? My Sarika? I can't live without my Sarika. The cat spoke solemnly. I fear the work of evil here. A witch, an ogre, a ghoul. Something has gotten the ring in Sarika as well. The witch, the witch, I know the one it's got to be. The one that's been looking for a bride for her ugly son. And then he promised, Cat and I will bring Sarika back to you, Sindhu. The cat and the dog left Sindhu and hurried off down the brook. 
Presently, they came to the iron fence surrounding Sindhu's mansion. They could see Sarika weeping by the window. They wondered how they would get into her because they found that the fence had grill work at the bottom so fine that even the skinny cat couldn't get through. Then they heard a sound. It was music, very faint at first, but gradually growing louder. And then they could see, coming along just inside the fence, a wedding parade of mice. The mice did not notice the cat and dog standing by the fence as they marched nearer and nearer. The cat quickly reached her skinny paw through the fence and caught the mouse groom by the tail. Are you not the mouse who used to live in my mistress's pantry? And did I not let you into the cookie jar many times? <laughs> yes, stuttered the mouse. We need your help, said the dog. This is my wedding day. I can see it is, but this matter is urgent. Inside the mansion, there is a witch who's stolen a magic ring. She uses it to do terrible things. We must get back the ring unnoticed. Surely there are among you some few that are brave enough to go and take the ring from the witch's finger? The mouse bride spoke. I owe you a favor for letting my sweetheart live to marry me. My brother here has seen the witch. He is brave and strong. The bride's brother stepped forward, and soon three others, including the groom's brother, the best mouse, joined him. We are the fearless four. We will get the ring from the witch. And off they went. The mice found the witch asleep in Sindhu's bed. Her hands were folded on her chest. She was snoring deeply. The first mouse said, well, we will surely wake her if we try to take the ring off her finger. There's no easy way we can get at it. Wait a minute, cried the second mouse. We could wish the old witch away if we could only touch the ring. I have a better idea, said the third mouse. Let's not wish her away. Let's wish her into cheese. Oh, good idea, said the fourth. Now, who's going to climb up there and touch the ring? Silence. Not one of the brave mice really wanted that job. OK, we must draw tails. This was the mice's way to settle difficult arguments. The four of them backed up into a circle and tied their tails together. Then each one reached behind and took the tip of a tail. The one who took his own tail was the loser and would have to do the job. The first mouse took the tail of the second mouse, and the third mouse knew the moment he touched it that he had taken his own tail. So it was the task of the third mouse to climb up and touch the ring. Slowly and very, very cautiously, he began the dangerous climb up the bedclothes. Gradually, he moved up until he was on the witch's pillow. There was a sudden snort, and the witch rolled over, nearly crushing the mouse. Now her hand was up on the pillow beside her nose, and there it was, the ring. The mouse touched it and said, If this is the charmed ring, let the witch be cheap. Flash and wham! The mouse was suddenly standing next to the biggest piece of cheese he had ever seen, and around his tail was the ring, the charmed ring. Hooray, hooray, shouted the others. You are our hero! And they carried the third mouse on their shoulders out to greet the cat and the dog. The third mouse presented the cat with the gold ring. Hero cat is the charmed ring. You need not fear the witch, for she is now cheese and a wonderful dinner for our wedding party. The cat and the dog together touched the ring and made this wish. Let all be returned to Sindhu, and may happiness be with him and Sarika for all time to come. With that, everything became as it once had been. Sindhu and Sarika were reunited. The flowers bloomed, the brooks sang, and the cat and the dog lay down together for a well-deserved nap. <laughs>